Welcome to the Extra Podcast at Northview Community Church. It is a new year when you're getting this podcast, but we are still in 2018. So we are pre-recording this because we'll all be quite busy the first week of January, busy relaxing before school starts and before everything gets going again. And we are going to be talking about family devotions. I've got Dwight here and Jeff and Jen Gamash, and they are going to introduce themselves. And if you're thinking family devotions, I'm going to turn this off because I don't have kids at home. Don't. We'll tell you why you should be listening to this still anyways. But first, let's listen to our guests that we have. So Dwight, why don't you go first? Hi, guys. Well, I, again, you can't see me, but I'm Dwight. Dwight just waved. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh. yeah. um, it, we if, waved back at him. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> if, if you've been up north, you know me. I'm uh, the children's pastor here. Um, got three awesome children, a six who will be seven at the end of the December, a six, a four, and a one and a half year old. They've been married for about nine years now. Um, and yeah, so love it. You're in the busy, busy time yes. with children. Busy, yeah. messy, all the good things. <laughs> yeah. Everything above. Yeah. Jen. Um, my name's Jen, and we have three kids. Um, Kaden is 20, Emma is 18, and Abby is 15. And the older two are at Trinity, and Emmy, Abby is at MEI. And we've been married for 22 years. And been coming to Northview for quite a while? For probably over 25 okay. years. Okay. <laughs> Long time. Jeff? Yeah. uh, As you know, we have the three kids, and I currently work at Trinity Western as well. I used to work at MEI for 13 years, worked as an elementary teacher and vice principal, and then moved to the middle school. So I have lots of experience with those ages and then have coached at the high school level and and the university level too. So I feel like I've walked uh, a journey with, with kids of this age that we're going to be talking about today yeah. and, and, you know, Jen's an educator as well. So, uh, we probably come at it with maybe a little bit more uh, experience than yeah. the, than the average person might, but I think our ideas are not revolutionary in any way, shape or form and could be done by anyone. So okay. excited to share today. And, and you have a role here at Northview. What's that? It's true. Yeah. Uh, I am an elder here okay. and, uh, have been on the elder board for the last two years. Uh, we've been members here pretty much our entire married lives. We actually, my first time coming here was because one of the guys at Trinity in the dorm had a car. I did not. And this is where he came. <laughs> so you got a ride. So I got a ride. ride to church. Yes. And uh, the, the... Does that the, guy still the, come here? No, but I still know him. Okay. Yeah, he lives in he lives in Langley, goes to different church. But uh, yeah, seeing those pictures of Vern... And people sitting up behind Vern right. when we came late, that's where we sat. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's neat. So it's, we love this church. Good. Okay. All right. So our topic today, family devotions. Um, like I said, if you don't have kids at home, don't turn this off. Um, because you're part of this church family. If you're, well, actually, that's not always true. We have listeners that don't come to Northview. But if you are part of a church family, that means you're around other parents and you're around kids. And you can play a role in their lives through children's ministry, through praying for the kids and the parents in this church or whatever church you go to. But for parents who are listening to this that do have um, kids, especially kids at home, you have a a pretty big role in their lives. And we want to encourage you today. We want to give you some ideas. We want to give you some biblical instruction about your role as a parent in the lives of your children. And what better time to do this than a new year? Maybe it's been an area in your family's life that you've struggled to get going. Uh, No better day than to start now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But we don't want it to be a burden either. So listen to us, take what we're saying, and we hope it's an encouragement and that it's not a discouragement. Jen and Jeff and Dwight have years of experience working with kids and families and they might sound like they have it all together and they do it perfectly. Um, we do but not. They've no. assured me they don't. And they have prepared some really good stuff to, to share with our listeners with you today. So 
that's just kind of the premise that I want people to be listening to this with. I don't want them to feel like they've got another big burden on their shoulder. Parenting is a tough job. It's really hard, and we need God's grace for it. And we have his Holy Spirit to equip us to do it. So, But there is still a responsibility to do things and to be intentional. So, And there's nothing more rewarding, honestly, like to see your kids walking in um, the ways of the Lord. Like Mm. it is fantastic. I mean, that's why you want to partner with the church because what's going on at the church and what's going on at at home, you want those two things to be coherent. Yeah. And so, yeah, I I can't imagine doing something more valuable than this. So. And yet we will have parents listening to this and they might be saying, I did all that. I did those family devotions. I had that big plan. We taught scripture and their children don't follow the Lord today. And Mm -hmm. we're called to be obedient and do what the Bible asks us to do when raising our children. But ultimately their salvation is in the Lord's hands, right? right? Right. So, um, yeah, we're aware of that too for people, Mm -hmm. right? For me, if I can just jump in, like one encouragement I always have, you know, I I, I go back to the, you know, Jesus' first miracle. Like what did he ask the disciples to do? Go and fill the pots with water. And Jesus did what only he could do was Mm -hmm. turn that water into wine. And so for us as parents, all we're called to do is to disciple, to love, to teach those under our root, to teach our kids. And we leave the heavy lifting to Jesus because it's, you know, it's, we by our own power, we will not be able to save our kids. That's right. All we can do is what we've been called to do, which is to teach, to love them, to impress mm-hmm. upon their hearts a love for God and let him do that work. And so it's like when when I understood that, there was a weight lifted off of my shoulders. Like, oh, no, I just get to partner with God right. and do what he's called me to do. And he'll take care of the rest. Yeah. And that's really what we want our listeners to go away with today. Right. That that burden of saving your child is not your burden to bear. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have the joy and the privilege to partner with God um, to teach your children about mm-hmm. the Word of God and what it says and how to live their life in a way that honors Him. So let's start with Jen and Jeff. And I'd love to hear kind of your background with family devotions or even if you called it that. Some people call it family worship. Some people don't even use the word devotions. Let's hear what you guys did. Your kids are mostly out of the house now. But they are, yeah, which is hard to believe. It yeah. goes by so fast. Um, for Jeff and I, I think we had more of a vision Um, to have the Bible and Jesus as the center of our family in many aspects, not um, just like family devotions that you check off the box and that's done. So we would have traditional family devotions, but one of the verses that we always came back to is Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9. These commandments I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And so what we've tried to do in many different ways is um, to teach them, to talk to them, to love them in all different different aspects. So how did that look? So you said traditional family devotions, which when you say that, I envision you sitting around the breakfast table or the dinner table, reading the Bible or a focus on the family devotional or right. something. How did it look beyond that? So beyond that, one example would be um, we had something called Toolbox Tuesday, and it's It's a book by Focus on the Family, and it would have a science experiment, verses, or biblical truths tied into that, and the kids loved it. They would still, I will ask my 20-year-old what different props mean, and they can list the biblical truth, and we laugh about what happened. And so one example would be we had a $20 bill out and a tube of toothpaste with all of these um, tools, and we... And when the kids were younger, $20 is a lot of money. So yeah. we said, anyone can have this $20. I'm going to squeeze this toothpaste out. And anyone who can get the toothpaste all back into the tube gets the $20. Well, all three of them think they can do it. So they take their turns. And, of course, they can't get all of it back in. They're trying everything from funnels to watering it down to shoving it in. And <laughs> anyways, at the end of it... The lesson behind it was when we speak our words, how we speak, we can never take everything back. Mm -hmm. And just so then we would just talk about what does that mean? What does that look like with our friends, with our family, with our siblings, um, that we can't always take it all back? And so it's kind of a fun way of teaching different biblical truths. So that would just be one example of an experiment. Yeah. And if you did that today, it'd be like, you can't take the pictures back that you post on Instagram. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Get to totally teach a lot with that concept. Yeah. Oh, so then great. every Tuesday we would we would do that and they would look forward to that. I think it was just about 
like when I grew up, devotions looked like half an hour after supper. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Weekdays. Um, there would often be some kind of Bible reading. There was a book called Character Sketches that actually had uh, animals from nature and then a lesson that was tied into it. Uh, books of the Bible, different, different ways like that. So it, it was probably a little bit more traditional in that sense. Um, Jen grew up, she wasn't a believer when she was younger, wasn't in a Christian family, so she didn't have that same background. But then because of our teaching backgrounds, it was like, how do we make this, like, it's just something spiritual discipleship, Christian discipleship just happens in life. Doesn't necessarily have to happen at a particular time. When they're younger, we found it much easier to schedule yeah. that into your time. Yeah. Then as they get older and practices come and all these things that get added to the... You're not always eating dinner at the no, same time No, it's, it's far yeah. more difficult. So then how are you going to do it? Because it's still super important to do. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be really cognizant of... The nice thing is, is when you're driving. So we would go on either a longer family vacation or just driving to practices and things like that. That was a... You have a captive audience in that space. For sure. And let's talk. Let's talk about this. And there was there's lots of great resources. We... Like we still have adventures in Odyssey. I don't know how many Jonathan Parks. There was just so oh, yeah. many ways of getting into these conversations and we didn't necessarily have to lead them there. These other resources would lead them there. And then, but then we could have those conversations. But you were intentional about it. You had a plan. Totally. And said, this is what God has asked us to do with our children. And, and you had a plan. Yeah. We just, we wanted family devotions for lack of a better word, to be a time where scripture was seen as the authority. This is where you come for wisdom. This is where you come for guidance. This is where you come to when you're, when you're upset. This is like, this is, it, there's something deep and rich and meaningful for all parts of life here. And so that, that was probably like from a really young age, that, that was one of the number one things is just that this is where you come. We don't go other places this is where we come first. Okay. So you're building a foundation yeah, there. Of kind of like some biblical literacy, looking at different books of the Bible. Um, what was the storybook? Was the storybook Bible? Is the that... Jesus storybook mm -hmm. Bible. Yeah. yeah we good. found when that very, yeah. Yeah, very rich um, source when they were younger. But yeah, then, then you just have to change as, as they get a little bit older. Then you're, okay, how do we, how do we engage with them in a way that is still... Um, getting their attention right. and, and, and communicating the truth of, of God's word and God's truth to them. So, and that seems like a pretty big challenge when the changes, when you have different ages, like Dwight's kids are younger than mine. Mine are in between probably Dwight's kids and the Gamash kids. And we're finding, Oh, our youngest one still loves the storybook Bible, but our oldest one, not so much. Right. Like mm -hmm. I, I think for our listeners, they could be saying, um, how do you keep their attention when you've got a five-year-old and a 13-year-old? How do you do this when they don't want to be doing it? Like, do you force family devotions? Right. And I think a lot of that comes back to, um, I don't think you force it. I think you want them to want it. And I think one way is doing maybe it creatively, like with, with the experiments and things like that. But right from a young age, if I was to give anyone advice, I feel like building relationships with your kids at a young age is really going to open the door for a soft heart towards Jesus mm -hmm. and also living what you're talking. And so another verse that is important to our family is, above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of your life or for everything you do flows from it. And we taught this verse to our kids at a very young age. So why don't we watch this or why? And we would try a guard a little bit when they were younger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that opened up their hearts. I don't, it's hard to explain. I never ever found them to be resistant to mm -hmm. being a part of digging into things spiritually. Okay. But it wasn't super regimented in our, in our house. Like I said, when they were, when it was younger, there would be a set apart time. But as it got older, they certainly there was times at bedtime and that's where it kind of gets individualized a little bit. So when you're putting your eight-year-old to bed and when you're putting your 13-year-old to bed, you're having very different discussions For sure. about what's what's going on. But it's it's coming back to 
biblical truth yeah. and w- where that is coming from. Oh, yeah, that's what we're struggling with. You know what? It talks about this in the Bible. Let's open your Bible and, and find that. Yeah, so I've it, noticed, I'll ask my kids, what can I pray for you about? And when it changes from the scrape knee to, I didn't get invited to that birthday party, you know right. what's There's going something. on in their mm-hmm. heart a little more, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that I think that's where some of the individualization yeah. comes out. Um, it sounds a bit, and Dwight, I hope that you'll talk about this in a little bit, that when they're younger, it actually is a bit more formal training that happens. You need to actually be intentional about, okay, we're going to read a children's Bible together. That's going to be right. our story time. We're going to yep. pray before we eat. We're, we're going to memorize pray, scripture. Memorize scripture. The the little devotionals that come home from mm-hmm. church on Sunday. Like, let's spend the time and do that together, mm-hmm. right? It, it's kind of formal. And then it, because life just expands as soon as they're teenagers and in middle school and high school, you don't have as much control over who they're spending time with, what they're seeing, what they're hearing. So you're, you need to be reacting then mm-hmm. to those things. But if you have that foundation before, right, like what you were saying, Jen, their hearts are open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when they were older, um, we would still try and Jeff would lead her. We would say, okay, what book of the Bible should we study? And by study, I mean after dinner, we would read, we would talk about it, say, for example, Proverbs, and there's so many life lessons in Proverbs and how we can apply it to their life. Um, We would have them have a say in it. It wasn't like, okay, we are studying Romans. We'd say, you know, what book of the Bible do we want to study together? And we would do that when they were older. Um, Also, Jeff did the theology class with Caden in his Grade 11 year? Grade 12 grade year. Grade 11 yeah. and 12 because it's a two-year Oh, thing. right. Grade 11 and 12. So he was older than the other kids. So the other kids weren't quite ready for that, but yeah. we wanted that for him before heading off to university. So we would separate or we did Passport to Purity with our kids, and that was a weekend away. Both Jeff and I would take one of our kids and we'd go for a weekend and we'd talk about um, all the things involved with Passport to Purity. So some of the things were individual. Some of them were together. It doesn't happen accidentally, though. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, but it's worth it. Yeah. And by no means have we done this perfectly. And I think this airing at the beginning of a new year, so many times in our life we've gone, okay, we need to regroup. We need mm. to bring us all back in and we need to regroup. And you know what? We all have times where we think we're not doing enough or we're not doing it right. And I would just want to encourage people and say, as Dwight was saying, you know, we do our best, but Jesus is the one that does it. Not us. Yeah. Neat. Dwight, you've been so patient. <laughs> yeah, it's just not, naughty. I, I don't think I've ever heard Dwight this quiet. <laughs> it's just interesting. It's, it, for me, it's neat because, like I said, my, my kids are still young, and so we're very much in that. You know, we, we pray before dinner at, at, you know, before bed. We read scripture. Um, and my son comes home with the devotionals that we provide here, and, like, he, he loves to read. And so, mm-hmm. like, he's – dad, we – and so, like, we – we get that, and and so for me in my head, I'm like, and I know there's a change coming. Mm. I know, and and I can already see it. You know, with my son who loves to read and loves Lego. Sometimes we take we use I you know I will use Lego to kind of impart a biblical truth for him. Whereas with my four year old, she is into art, and and so then it's like, okay, how how do I make scripture alive for her? Then oh, let's draw it out, let's paint it out, and then she's like, oh, light. so it's just kind of figuring out that individual. It's like. He's, you know, if I if I try to explain scripture through art, you know, to Micah, he's gonna be like, he'll lost. Right. It's like, let's sit, let's read. That makes sense. But for Aaliyah, you know, let's draw it out. Let's paint the picture so she sees it. And, and so it's understanding where your kids are, yeah. um, and understanding who they are as well. Because when you do that, then you, when you make scripture alive to them in a way that makes sense to them, they it it just becomes that much more concrete in their little hearts. And mm-hmm. so. So yeah, I, I just love it. But it's it's yeah, like a lot of the stuff that you guys are are talking about it feeds right into um, all the stuff that you know in, into the stuff that we teach. Uh, when you talk about you know formal training, it needs time, it needs effort. It's not something that you can just like let's just try to wing this. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know, like no. It, as parents, you need to put the time and the money and the effort into training your kids because eventually one day they're going to be out of the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's sad to hear. A comment like, oh, I just don't have time for that. But if you are a Christian and if you care about what the Bible says, this should be a priority. Right. Like, totally. I, I'm I'm okay if you're feeling a little bad about that, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> because I want to say, like, if this is important to you, this should be a priority. Right. And we want to walk alongside families here at Northview. And our children's ministry department has this 
great class that you can take. It's actually like a course because yes. there's several classes. So there why are. don't you talk about it? Yeah, like, and we What's have, it called? So we've got some, we, myself with a, a good friend of mine, Glezos, I know you're probably listening. Um, so we've developed these classes for parents. That's Matt. Building. Matt, He's yes. Tri City pastor. <laughs> Another and, way to say his name. And it's really just um, allowing parents to see how do you take scripture, how how does scripture influence the way in which we parent, um, and and so we look at everything as so what's God's purpose for family? To you know, the last class that we talk about, we're going to talk about is. What does a family blessing look like? You know, especially for parents. How do you pray blessings over your children? Um, everything from discipline to training and instruction, you know, the big topics, sexuality, you know, and dating, media, so all these things. But we do it all through the lens of scripture. Like what does scripture have to say? How does scripture inform how I talk to my child about dating? How I, you know, how I discipline my kids, um, where I send them to school, how does scripture inform? all of those decisions. And you've kind of packaged that up in curriculum. Curriculum is something that teachers call the stuff that we teach. Right. It's easier way to say it. And it's called Building Stronger Families. Bingo. And we offer it here at Northview. What and if you guys haven't taken we it, we'd that? love for you guys to join in. Um, so right now we've taught the first six classes. Okay. Um, so yeah, all six of them. I'm not going to try to name all six That's of them okay. now. And then we've got to three more, the last three that are developed right now. Do I um, need one through six to come to you seven, don't. eight, nine? No, you yeah. really don't. And like you can, what we like for parents and, you know, for, for couples to do. So if you're going to jump in for seven, eight, nine, do all three together. Don't just say, you know, I'm going to come for seven. I may come for eight. And I'm gonna, you know, we want you to do all three together. And then, you know, next time we offer the other three, brilliant. You can kind of jump in there. But you, you don't need to have done one, two, three to come in for seven, eight, nine, you can okay. jump in anywhere. Yeah. And so, and, and that's like for us, for me, and I can only speak for myself, like my love, my desire um, to be able to equip parents, that happened almost seven years ago when my son was born and, and when I realized, oh wait, no one's talking to me about how to parent this mm -hmm. kid through yeah. the lens of scripture. And that led me on this journey of trying to learn as much as I can as it relates to parenting, especially parenting, um, through the lens of scripture and that's, you know, these classes that we have now, they were born out of that to, for me to better equip myself. But, but I'm like, if I am struggling with this, there's probably somebody else out there that's struggling with this. And so together, how can we do this? So, okay. I think it's so important because building that foundation, if you take the time to build that foundation when they're, when they're younger, it will just pay off dividends later on like it it's incredible I, I love sports I'm an athletic director I've always been in sport if I could go back and redo our younger kids years I would do less four or five year old soccer <laughs> and I would spend more time doing this okay and we did it did some during that time but I I don't think you would ever regret that right and sometimes you get caught up in it and you're like, oh, everyone's you got your kids doing this, that, and the next thing. And I think if you really take the time to do this in those years, not to say that it, you can't do it later for, for sure, but that would be my encouragement. If you're listening and you're deciding, okay, what are my kids going to be spending their time in there in those years? There's nothing better that they yeah. could be doing. Protect that time, right? I think yeah. back when my kids weren't in school yet and you have those years, if, if you're able, if you're a mom and you're able to stay at home with your kids or a dad and you're able to stay at home with your kids, or even if you work and the kids are in daycare, to have them in all those extra activities on your weeknights and your weekends, that's time away from you when you can be spending time with them, teaching them about God's word, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. And that's one of the things that some um, we teach in training and instruction is that the busier the family is, the less likely training, devotional family worship happens because it's, you get home and, okay, we have dinner. We have to get to Taekwondo. We have to get to dance. We have to get to yeah. hockey. And, oh, wait, where's God in all of that? Mm -hmm. And so the busier the family is, God just becomes... Well, it just becomes Sunday. Right. If you even have time to go to church. Exactly. Right. And so that's why it's like, you know, one, one thing that we teach we in first class, it's you incorporate God into everything that we do. Right. And, you know, I love to talk to you talked about being, you know, sports is where for some families, it's, well, we play sports here and then God is there. So, well, no, it's one and the same. It's God and sports, God and music, God and church, God and school. God is never separate from, you know, he is a part of everything to do. And when you understand that model, then it becomes easier. You know, it, it's less likely that God gets pushed to a side. 
Because, well, no, he, he's just a part of everything that we do. So what would you say to the parents or the single parents? Says, well, I work full time, but I send my kids to a Christian school and we go to church as much as we can. My kids go to Sunday school or my kids go to youth. And so I think I'm getting this covered through what everybody else is doing oh, for my kids. That hurts my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Jen read this verse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when, you, when you look at Deuteronomy 6 and what Moses was saying there, nowhere in there did Moses say, you take your kids to the high priest and the high priest will teach your kids. No, Moses said, you teach, you people of Israel, you parents, mm -hmm. you are the ones that are to teach. And so, um, like the encouragement here is, no, you, you carve that time out. Yeah. And like, yet church does help and right. school does help. Yes. Like the no, partnership see, is powerful. The partnership yeah. is when powerful. When you take those yeah. things and every place your kid is involved and they're speaking the same message, that's incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I remember the very first time I brought Kate and our oldest to Sunday school here. And I'm now leaving this young boy with these people. And I'm like, these people are taking time out of their day to try to do what I find valuable, which is to teach them the word of God, to teach them. To, I'm like, I, I welled up with tears. I'm like, huh. this is so beautiful that now there is someone else in my corner that is helping me do this. Yeah. It is not just Jen and I, it is not just our family trying to do this. There's a partnership with this. Same thing when we went uh, to Christian school and you have teachers that are doing, like, I'm just so thankful for them because they're partnering with us, but it is a partnership. It's not a divesting of And it's not their responsibility. responsibility. Right. Yeah. yeah. One thing I always try to tell parents, it's, you know, my responsibility is to the three kids that Amanda and I have at home. Um, what my responsibility to the parents here is, we are going to come alongside you and we will walk with you and we will partner with you and give you every resource possible so that you can become that parent that God has called you to be. But my job is not to come and disciple and teach your kids. My job is to help you disciple and to teach your kids. My, like, I have three kids that... God has asked me to disciple. I will partner with you. Together, we can do that. Because you know, I, I truly believe that when the church and the home, when that partnership comes together, you will have, like we the church, we the parents, we will have a greater influence when we see it as like home working together, church working together for the same goal. Okay, so say we have a listener and they're like, wow, I never knew this was really my job. I'm new to the church or I'm just checking out Christianity. What do I do next? Can they email you, Dwight? Yes, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I email me. Let's go out for coffee. I'd love to, to kind of sit down and, and chat with you. But like what you can do next is try to figure out how can you reorient your life, your family's life around the things of God. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the first thing. It's like, okay, so where can I declutter the stuff in my family's life to, okay, let's get rid of, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to throw anybody right. under the Right, but the, the stuff that doesn't really have eternal significance. Right. Yeah. You get rid of that stuff and say, okay, we, we replace that. Okay, we bring God in here. We get rid of that. We bring God. Like, what are the things that you can rid your family of that you know they don't need anyways? Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, we replace that with God. Like, that, that's the first step is looking at your family, looking at the landscape of your family and saying, where, where's God not? Where is mm -hmm. he missing? Which is a bigger perspective than just fitting in five minutes at dinner for family right. devotions, yes. right? The family devotions is kind of an outpouring that happens when you have that reorientation towards bringing God into your family life. Because anytime, because when you say, oh, we'll just do five minutes at dinner, because it'll be five minutes today. And then tomorrow it's like, oh, well, I'm tired. Or there's something interesting on TV that whenever it's just, there's no plan behind it. Yeah. It's easy to just leave behind, yeah. you know, and, and I always, I, I tell dad, you need your Joshua moment. Like you need to have that As for me in my household. We will serve the Lord because then that says I have a plan. This is where me and my family go. I don't care what you guys do, mm -hmm. but this is where I'm taking my family. And I, and I believe every, every man needs to have that moment for their family or single mom, if you're listening out there, but you need to have that, no, that Joshua moment saying, this is the plan for my family. This is where we're going. And we're not going to stray from that. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just reorienting your family around the things of God saying, no, this is what I've been called to do. And I'm not going to let anything distract me from that. And I think that starts really young too. And I think it's hard because you're looking at what everyone else is doing. Like I remember our kids have been quite involved with sports, but that means when they were involved in sports, it meant we, we cut out a lot of other things. So for example, during elementary school, Almost always, play days, if you're going to have a play day, it's going to be on a Friday. 
we, we come home after school because we've, we've chosen to do this on Saturday. Or, so it's not like we're constantly running where they might, that might not be a popular decision. Yeah. yeah. But in the long run, I, we feel like it's been a good decision because they just know, you know what? Play days are Fridays. We're coming home. Every we're sitting and having our clean. snack. Yeah. You know, you've spent the last six hours with peers. And now, you know, family is a priority yeah. for us. So I think carving out that time, but it's it's hard. And I think as they get older, I, do, I just don't think you can be really um, regimented. regimented to turn kids off. And I think that also comes right back to, do you have a relationship with your kid? Like rules without relationship, you're going to get rebellion. Mm. But if you've built in and poured in that time and have that relationship with your kids. So for example, when the kids are in high school, you know, Caden and Emma, they have different practice times. Well, it's not ideal for supper, but it's important to me that we're all sitting down together. So maybe we're eating at seven or we're eating at 430 mm. so that we can all be around the table. And it's not like I'm saying, oh, Caden, you can't, you know, I'm all upset about it. It's like, you know what? Okay, Caden, you have practice here, here. We're going to have supper together as a family as much as we can. Not always. There's always reasons why we can't, but... As much as you can. As much as we can. Yeah. Supper's at 4.30. Grab but a again, snack. It's it going to be back later. To your, you have a bigger vision yes. for, for what you want to be teaching yes. your kids and how you want your family Yes, to and I think be. it's important if, if when your kids are young, if you kind of come up with, say, four or five... Um, like a mission statement, what, you know, God first, family's a priority. One of the ones we always told our kids, it's always better to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So as they're growing up, if you come and tell me the truth, there's a way less of a consequence that if I found out you've, you're lying, like just things that they know. Okay. If you ask them, okay, what, what is your family about? Yeah. And they can, could list off these important things. God is always first. And He's our plumb line. It's not, well, this child does this and they're allowed to do this. Well, no, that's not our plumb line. The, the Bible is our plumb line. And where are we going to go from there? Yeah, we've spent time too as a family doing um, like a vision statement and having some core values. Right. Yes. And having those core values like on a chalkboard and the kids know them. And if they're going to be disciplined for something, it's going to connect to one of those core values. Absolutely. Right? And it, make, it, it makes sense to them. Right. Yeah. Well... That's a lot of stuff for the first week of January. <laughs> and we know we, we gave you lots of ideas and, and you heard how other families have, have done this and it is not, um, not perfect by any means. Oh no, I was yes. not going to say that, <laughs> but it's not, <laughs> but it, it's not a light task. No, no, it is a responsibility, but we have a helper. Like we said at the beginning, the Holy Spirit was given to us when Jesus ascended uh, to help us with this. And we are equipped to, we have the power of God through the Holy Spirit. So parents, I hope you know that. And I hope you live in that hope and trust God with your children. Uh, Jeff, can you close by praying for our listeners? Would love to. Okay. God, thank you so much for uh, creating family. Uh, family is a very uh, a rich place. Uh, sometimes it hasn't been for people. Sometimes it's been a place for, where there's been a lot of hurt. But at its core, you created family because you saw that as the best possible way for us to learn how to interact with each other and uh, learn about you. And so uh, I just pray that people listening to this would be encouraged to take on the responsibility of teaching young people about you and the truth in your word, to be creative, to have fun with it, to do it uh, when they're uh, in the car, when they're uh, out for a hike. Uh, it doesn't have to be just at one point in time, but God, that it would be uh, a, a priority and that it would be something that is intentional and is based on your word. Thank you for people who have gone before us. Thank you for my parents, uh, for others who have invested in us. And uh, I just pray that it would bear fruit going out from this podcast in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.